Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we've got yet again another 3D printing unboxing. Hello, 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 Jerry from 3D Printing Tech. Hello, Jason M. Hello, Peter. Hello, Gary. Hello. Oh my God, there's lots of people. Hello, James. Hope you're well, mate. Yeah, well done on your um on your uh, victory there, Jerry. Congratulations. Hello, tripod. Uh oh, we're in trouble now. Hey, Carl. Carl, thanks very much for looking after the stream tonight. I do appreciate it. Hey, Rene. Hey, 3D Printing Technology. Oh, my God. There's quite a few people on here. Don't forget to enter the competition. We are giving away a couple of spools of Polymaker filament. If you go into the link below in your comments, um, in fact, I'll stick one in the comment right now. So all you need to do is answer one very, very simple little question. Uh, there you go. Let's pop that on there. And, um, yeah, I'll be giving away some uh, filament for free. Exciting time. So not as exciting as what I've got in front of me right now. So this week, or in fact last week, I was sent this via MakerMade. This is the 300X. It's a 300 by 300 by 400 um, FDM printer, which is absolutely fantastic. It's got onboard slicing. It's got a heated bed. It's got a microporous magnetic surface, apparently. It's auto bed leveling, 1.75 mil, printed in PEG. HTP PLA uh, TPU PTG and it's weighing in at uh, 15 kilos. It's all metal, all metal structure, dual Z's, and I'm dead excited to get this thing unboxing. Hello, 3D printing technology. Hello, matey. Oh, what's all this? Why not? Hang on, what's this? I'm going to put this up. Uh, we're not streaming. Do you keep Michael's pick? Hey, you know what? Um, so right now, as you might know, we've just had a baby, my wife and I, and she is sleeping downstairs and I'm sleeping upstairs. And yeah, Michael from Teaching Tech amongst with a couple of other YouTubers, because this is all about what we call a hook. So I do something funny, then maybe they look at this and go, ah, that guy, that's, I know what he's doing. And then maybe we tweet about it and we have a laugh about it. So that's that's where we're at. So yeah, so she's sleeping downstairs, I'm sleeping upstairs, and I have this whole array of YouTubers in photo frames around me just to kind of keep me, you know, normal, if that's even a thing. But either way, this has just come in thick and fast from FedEx. It's that a couple of days in uh, quarantine, while we were waiting for things to happen. I've got people texting me and all sorts now. Uh, what else have we got here? I'm good, yeah, hello, Jeff. Hope you're well, matey. Um, I'll tell you what, I did a video a couple of weeks ago on um, basically fixing a Creality printer, and uh, it's blown up. There's loads of people thanking me for it. So, uh, you know, if any of these videos do help you out, then that is just awesome. Thank you very much, James. Uh, Laugh it loud, never know. Unbox the pops. No, that's not going to happen, Amanda. That, that, you know, that's never going to happen. Even if my son was here right now and started pulling things apart, he would be ushered out the door, that's for sure. So let's get straight on into it, shall we? This is the 300X by MakerMade. I've got a very special guest coming onto the stream. It's not Michael from Teaching Tech. I wish it was, but I've got somebody actually better. Uh, Drew from MakerMade is going to be making an appearance in a little while. So uh, let's get straight onto it. Hi, Pete. Hope you're well. Uh, again, you know, I haven't got the... Uh, I haven't got uh, 3D printing uh, nerds background here, so I don't have people controlling the uh, the angles, but I do have a little sweet little button. And it's showing me all the different things I'm doing here. And look at this. Nice zoom in on this one as well. And it's in focus, James. Just pointing that out, mate. Anyway, let's get into this box. Let's hope that this works straight away. Here we go. So I'm printing some stuff at the moment, and I haven't spoken about it. Hey, Mark, hope you're well. Uh, I haven't spoken about it at all, but myself and another YouTuber who you know, we're going to be doing a series of uh, little kind of competitions, and um, we're just going to have some fun with it, and we're going to be printing different things and setting ourselves up for failure and challenges and all that kind of stuff, and this is going to be an integral part to uh, our fun and games with that. Uh, we've got a, uh, a boat-style um, a floating boat of some sort that's got to go across the Thames. We're going to do all these different challenges and uh, it's going to be fun. So let's get straight on into it and see what we've got inside of the box here. Let's try and get the angle changed up a little bit so you can kind of half see what's going on here. Wow, this is very swish. Look at that. We've got some good parts in here. So, ah, look at that. I've even been sent, ladies and gentlemen, a 3D printed rocket. Now, I'm assuming that this has been printed on this printer because Maker Made actually, uh, they test everything before it's shipped. So you can have some reassurance there that it's definitely gonna print. And um, that's pretty sweet, I like that. So we've got a bag of fun here as per usual. We've got, um, ah, this is gonna be interesting. We've got a US 
kettle lead. But don't worry, I'm, I can sort all that. And don't forget as well, on the box, it does say on the side here, make sure you check the voltage before you switch this on. So depending on where you are, if you're in the US, it's 110. If you're in the UK, it might be 230. Um, just make sure that you're not messing around with that. Hey, Mark. Hey, it's a pocket rocket. Yes, indeed. Right, I'm going to put this down over here. We've got a little smaller filament. Woo, exciting stuff. What's this? Wow, look at this. This is the screen. So the screen on this thing, I'm just conferring with my notes at the moment here. Uh, man, that's really nice. Look at this. Look at that. Beautiful. So it's got on board slicing this from this UI. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Is this seven and a half inches? That's what she said. Uh, okay, so the other things we've got here is a 260 degree nozzle, 110 on the bed. It's a 24 volt PSU. I don't know what brand that is. It's got an MKS L uh, 1.4 boards, I believe, or four, uh, yeah, 1.4, one, yeah, with TMC 2208 version two. Drew's going to kill me. This, this is, this is, you know, it's got a Raspberry Pi on board. That's exciting. Uh, running custom Marlin firmware, of course, and uh, Cura has already got a. Uh, it's already got a slicing profile for this. So this is going to be super, super easy. And uh, it's got lifetime support by Maker Made, And that is going to be worth its weight in gold, especially if you're a school, university, college, or a, uh, an educator in some way, because are you guys all going to be 3D printing repair people? No, you're not. You're going to speak to Maker Made, and you're going to make this work because the uh, guys down there, especially Drew, ace guy. So let's put this to one side as well. Uh, running out of room already. It's a big printer, guys. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Nice stickers, exciting stuff. More stickers. Personal note, dear Mr. Prentice, thank you so much for uh, receiving this fantastic product. We really appreciate your feedback and positive review. It's going to be a positive review. Don't worry about that. Inside this box, a USB drive and assembly guide. Support is at support at makermade.com. Warranty. Love it. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is great. Marketplace as well. I'm going to be. So what's going to happen with this is basically I do an unboxing, I build it, and we start printing. We're going to get drill on as well. And then uh, hopefully in the next week or so, then I'll do a full review video on what is really, really good about this printer um, or not, depending on what printer I review, of course, because I have got some other printers that have come in recently. They are not good. But let's move swiftly on. So we've got the gantry set. I'll tell you what, this is uh, exceedingly well packed. Let's have a look in here. Let's lift him out. I can see Drew in my uh, in my background. He's wincing as I'm picking these things up and chucking them about. Wow, this is cool. I'm so excited. I love doing unboxings. I must say I love doing unboxings. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that. So we've got BL Touch. This is lovely. Look at that. Maker made motors. Okay, this is cool. Right, let's pop that down there for a second. So the idea of this, guys, is that it's supposed to be super, super easy for the end user to assemble this. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure Drew will, this should only be four screws and you're done. No messing around like James was a couple of weeks ago trying to build that crappy old TiVo thing that he had the other day that didn't work. Oh, no, sir. This is, uh, this is good stuff. This is good, solid stuff. Here we go. Wow, this is awesome. So this is all metal as well. So, um, blimey, look at that. Jeez, that's cool. Okay, so, oh, let's lift this up. Pop him down. That's rid of ourselves of some of this packaging. So we don't need it anymore. Just make sure there's nothing else in there. Looking good, looking good. Here we go. Yeah, well done, Jerry, on getting his two and a half thousand subscribers. I think he's giving some stuff away. In fact, while we're on that subject, and we're, we're, we're bringing it all back to being all about me, of course, um, I am, I think, 50 off of, um, off of my next target, and I will be giving away a 3D printer. Brand spanking you anywhere in the world. Um, who knows? Maybe it'll be a maker-made one. Watch this space. Watch this space. Okay, so here it is. Ta-da! Let's go to cam three. Here we go. Donk. Look at that. Right, let me move some of this stuff around so you can actually see what's going on. I didn't help myself with creating this little bench today. I thought, yeah, this would be all right. Not enough room. Never enough room. 
It's always bad news. Okay, so got to just change something here. Hello, DB3D. Hope you're well. Uh, where's the picture of Jerry for the other side of uh, Michael? Well, actually, Jerry's picture is still in the bedroom, but um, I'll be sure to bring it down at some point. We're going to whip this on the bottom here as well. There we go. So let's come up and change back over to here. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. So I've got my special little rocket here. Thank you to Drew for printing that for me. What else have we got here? I'm getting messages galore here at the moment. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Oh, there's lots of stuff. Look at this. Okay, so we've got some cable ties. We've got a little bit of Bowden tube. We've got the old classic printer cable. We've got uh, a burger flipper. Love these. Fantastic for your, for your kitchen at home. Ladies and gentlemen, it's QVC. No, it's definitely not. Wow, hang on a minute. Shut the front door, what's this? Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first ever 3D printing screwdriver. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm wondering if uh, this isn't actually supposed to be in here. Maybe it's been left in here by accident by somebody. Oh, it's a double ender. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, we'll pop that there as well. Let's see what else we've got. Got Allen wrenches, all the usual gear. Amazing stuff, good stuff. Right, right now I'm actually looking for the screws which are here and we're gonna need this in a little while as well. So first things first, guys, I'm just gonna make sure that we are set to the right voltage. In fact, I can see Drew at the moment. Is this set to 240 or 210? 210, yes. 240, 110, we'll check it anyway, we'll check it anyway. He's kind of doing this. Stop, he's saying stop. Okay, let's have a look at the printer and see what we've got here. Hang on a minute, I've got to move back to the comments because they are still coming in quick and fast. QVC at some point, you never know. So don't forget guys, if you want to get involved with this, uh, there is a link over here. There you go, make sure you hit that link and uh, you can win yourself. Something on the wheel of names. Let's just have a quick look and see how many people have entered it so far. Probably not many, because uh, I know there's another couple of big streams going on tonight, which uh, annoy annoyingly. Six people. Come on, guys. We've got to get at least 10 here. That's no good. It's free. It's stuff for free, guys. Right, let's have a quick look here. At the moment, what does that say? Oh, uh, okay. Am I allowed to take off the switch access, Drew? Yeah, is that okay? Okay, cool. There's a little sticker over it. Okay, it's on 115. Okay, we're going to change that up then. There you go, 230. Job done. Easy peasy. In fact, I'll leave that on there. And I won't have to touch it again. There we are. Okay, sorted. This is nice. This is really nice. Now, I can't see, I can't see the brand of um, Power Supply, but it, it's Meanwell-esque. Is it a mean well, Drew? Drew's just crying at the moment. It is a mean well. Yeah, apparently it is a mean well. So it is a mean well, 24 volt, 15 amp power supply. Anybody that uh, is really into, uh, you know, the power supply snobbery that is uh, is out there in the world, um, you'll be pleased to know that. Now, I've got a bunch of things here. Now, let's see if I can find out, without reading the instructions, which ones I'm going to need. Okay. What have we got here? Do, 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 do. I'm guessing it's going to be the M5 and 20s. Looking at Drew again. This is the support. I'm doing a live stream and, and I can see, you can't see him, but I can see him. Drew's just laughing, going, yeah, it's done. We're cooked. We're cooked. That's no, all good. Right, we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Four screws, Drew. Look at that. And you've even given me five. So, you know, if one goes wrong, what have we got here? Let's find some stuff. So I hope you guys are all well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, give me some love. What's this? Uh, four USB ports. Hey, it resembles a PS snob remark or P5. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, dear. Uh, like to see, like seeing the ethernet port on the side. Oh, yeah, baby. This has got an inbuilt Raspberry Pi on it. So um, you're going to be running bulk to print, I'd imagine. And, oh, Mark, lots of love there. Thanks, mate. Here we go. Right. So we've got some screws. Let's see how this goes together. Hopefully without breaking it. This is really nice. 
I'm excited. Okay, let's slot this together then. Let's make sure we're going in around the right way. Pop this over the top. So am I to assume... Drew, it can't just be these four screws. There's got to be a load of messing around to do. It can't be four screws and just plug in the cables. This is far too easy. Surely, surely there's more to do. Although, hang on, let's just get that lined up. In he goes. That was noisier than it should have been. Sorry about that, guys. Blowing your eardrums out. Here we go. Plug that one in. Okay, so where are my screws? Now I lost my screws. Drew, this is a disaster. Where are my, where are my screws? Where did I put them? Guys, seriously, they're going to be underneath here, I'm sure. Yes, they are. Okay. Well, I thought this was going to be accessed from the bottom, but it's actually accessed from the side. So this is going to be super easy to uh, to install. Here we go. Let's whack this one in. What's all this? Lots of information. <laughs> hey, you've got to have a good power supply in these things, guys. Here we go. Imagine if you got one of these, James. Imagine all the fun games you could have with this in five seconds that you'd probably have it built. So those who didn't see uh, Honey Badger's uh, last couple of videos, I feel really sorry for him, actually, because he's, uh, he's had some Friday afternoon printers for sure. Um, I don't know where you're getting these printers from, dude, but this one, I'm guaranteed guaranteed 100% I'm going to plug this on and it's just going to work and it's going to be amazing. Drew is giving me the thumbs up. He's going, yeah, man, this is all good. So it's four screws, guys. Imagine, so the idea of this printer, okay, we will address all these uh, all these things. People have been posting messages up to me and stuff about um, things like the price and stuff. Imagine if you're a teacher in a school and all of a sudden you're being told that you're going to be the person that's in charge of 3D printing and you know nothing about 3D printing. Now, there would have been a time that you would have known absolutely nothing about 3D printing yourself. So you've got to put yourself in that picture. And the way that they've marketed this and the way that they are marketing this is basically around the fact that it's the support that you're paying for. So all wrapped up in the price. And I've, I've been on the calls. I've, you know, I've listened to the people that he's he, he's been supporting. And, um, you know, it, it's all very, very humble people just wanting to get past the whole element around, I don't want to be a 3D printing support um, set up. I just want the printer to work and I just want to get on with my day. So happy days. And that's what this does. So let's plug the power supply in. Here we go. For the heated bed. Let's make sure we put this in right around the right way. Okay, we've got another couple of cables down here. They are labelled, so we've got an X here. We've got a, looking for the Z. Here we go, Z1. Pop that one in there. Exciting stuff. Hello, SPC3D. Hope you're well. I like the bare aluminium look. So do I, actually. I think it looks awesome. So let's move this one around. He's stuck under the bed. So let's move this over to here. Move this out and under the bed here. So E for the extruder. And then we're going to have X that plugs into the bottom of this motor here. Yeah. And this one here. Now, of course, I've got to pop the screen on in a second. And uh, the screen appears to be a HDMI port. And the eagle-eyed viewers of you that are out there, you would have seen on the side here that we have got some USB ports and also an Ethernet port. That's going to be where our Raspberry Pi has been mounted. These connections are really nice as well. It's a bit like uh, wiring up a computer. And uh, those of you who have got, what's this say? What's the price on these? Um, the price, I believe, retail at the moment is $1,098. However, if you use the Sam Prentice-MM um codes you get a load of money off so give that a go but um they've sent me this 
free of charge to test and to use and promote uh, as I see fit. And um, again, you know, going back a year, it's literally a year, I think, this week or the next couple of weeks that uh, I started working with Maker Made. I'd not done a YouTube video before. I'd not had any kind of confidence to kind of do this kind of stuff. Uh, and I had no kind of drive to do it. And Maker Made sent me the uh, original Maslow. And then they sent me, which is a video on, then they sent me the new M2 upgrade. So this is the eight foot by four foot kind of vertical CNC machine that I was using, uh, which I think has had something like 27,000 views on my YouTube channel. It's, it's by far the most popular um, video that I've, I've produced or videos that I've produced on, on YouTube. And uh, as I say, yeah, there you go. Rene's on it, look. There you go. So yeah, so the total, I believe, was $946. And actually, when you boil, when it boils down to it, and just go back to thinking when you're, you know, imagine you went to a Chinese company and this is produced in the US at the moment, right? And it's quality parts. And that I, I can't stress enough um, how much time I've spent researching this, looking at this, sitting on the calls with other users as well. And these are people that are in school saying, well, how do I fix this problem? And Drew's there saying, well, this is what we're going to do. Or they send you a part or they send you an SD card or they send you any of those kinds of things. So, you know, forget, forget the creality style community stuff and if you look at creality look at what they did with the cr6 they did a kickstarter campaign which was absolutely horrendous i nearly swore then it's a children's show guys which was bad right they put this out into the market and then it's once again so people like sebastian that's had to rework the whole ui get this thing working um and you know if you're anything like tripod it's probably under your desk um you know getting covered in dirt on on a single foot but anyway, let's move swiftly on. I won't get too bogged down. So it's not just four screws. There's also the screen to put on as well. So I'll just quickly grab that. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the moment of truth. Let's pull this up here. Bow, wow, 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 wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we like. So I'm assuming this is just going to go on with two little bolts on the side here. And those two little bolts are going to be... Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to be M4s or if they're going to be M5s. Looking at Drew, he's not saying anything. I think he's, I think he's just checking his Facebook. He's, uh, he's, he's just laughing at me. This is great, isn't it? Okay, so it's not M5s. What are these bolts for then? I'm going to have to get him on in a minute. Are they M5s? Are they the long M4s that go in here, Drew? No, they're not. There's going to be another set then. I'll tell you what, rather than messing about, I'm going to bring him on. Here we go. Here we go. There he is, the man himself. <laughs> I love that you're just winging it. Uh, you're just like, oh, we don't need any of these quick start guys. We don't need any of these. Uh, we're fine. No. That's great. I love it. Yeah, so they're the, there's two small little bolts, um, little like M4 bolts that you'll use for the screen. But you wanna plug the HDMI and the USB in first okay. um, before you attach it, cause it's kind of a tight, it's it's intentionally like a tight fit, so the cord's not long. So you wanna plug that in first and then you can screw it right in. And be what screen right. is this? This is cool, dude. This so is yeah, it's, a, it's a seven inch um, fully like uh, 1080p uh, screen. So, wow. Yeah. We're, okay. we're pretty pumped about it. Uh, just about the functionality, we wanted to do something where you can use um, and really build on something to, to have all types of different user experiences on there where we eventually want to even have um, like where you could watch videos and, and watch, you can do your onboard slicing on the screen itself. Um, we're setting up and working it out the, the kinks to be able to do, even do support tickets eventually someday through it. So the yeah. goal is to try to make that literally to use the miniature Raspberry Pi, the 3B plus that's in there to utilize it to its max capacity by having a screen like that. So. Awesome. This, is, this is the most trickiest part, I think, right now, because I, I have got mid -hat fingers. And, yeah, it uh, is the trickiest part. You got to make sure it slides all the way in there and, and gets set. Man, this is why this is going to be good for STEM, because these kids have got tiny little fingers, <laughs> and uh, I have not. Right, that's cool. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So, obviously, we've had a couple of conversations, and then you went on holiday. Then I had a couple yeah. of conversations <laughs> with somebody else, and then we started getting into his machine and we started hacking it um although we weren't really hacking it we were we were just looking yeah, at the ui cool. um because i had some questions around the functionality of like octopi yeah. and um you know if you can put a webcam straight onto this and thanks marcel i appreciate that mate thank you for uh 
for your little donation there and your super chat. Um, so is his printer okay now or is it kind of where, where did he end up or have you not spoken to him? Um, I haven't talked to Mike today yet. I'm still kind of get all caught up. I need to, I was actually going to call him right after this. Um, I texted him back and forth a little bit, but I was going to call him after this. He might even be watching right now. Uh, he might be. To get him going, um, on there. So yeah, you can, you can upgrade to a Pi 4B if you want, but all the functionality that, that we found you can get with the 3B plus. So you, you, you can upgrade it to, if you want to, but 3B plus is more than enough to do everything that we wanted to do with it. Um, so that's why we decided to go with that because um, we're trying to keep it as, as simple as possible and we want to utilize all the features that it has. Um, and you know, that's why we wanted to go with that one. So you can upgrade it if you want to, um, but the UI is all designed for that 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 3D Plus um, that's on there. And that's what the screen is for. And then and that integrates with the MKS board as well. So um, with with that, that Pi has the Cura engine actually on it. So that's how the onboard slicing is. So we have our um, running Cura engine on there um, in addition to Octoprint. So it's not Octoprint's engine, it's the, the, Cura print, the Cura engine that's on there as well. So Octoprint is kind of the back end, and then we're running with Cura engine as the slicer that's on there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, do, have, to we do have this on there. Awesome. That's pretty good. That's pretty good going. Um, what's this say? The reason I'm asking is because you said something about all the slicing support, internet, yeah. webcams. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can you can access it from any device. So um, for schools, that'd be like Chromebooks and tablets and everything. You can actually access it um, by either the web address, by, by the name of the printer, or by the IP address to where you can send prints directly to the printer uh, to make it easier to where you don't have to download and install programs. So uh, I was a teacher for years before I got into educational 3D printing and as been I've been teaching 3D printing for the past five years to teachers um, uh, really across the world, but mostly in the US and North America. And one of the big things is trying to get access to different programs because they don't have admin capabilities at most schools. So to try to get something downloaded that only works on a Windows and Mac is another hurdle that a classroom has to go through. So being able to just create something on a tablet or on a Chromebook and then send it directly to the, the printer to get printed as its STL file, just directly upload it to the printer itself. And the printer saves it on board to either print later or to print it directly from there is something that we wanted to, to integrate. So you didn't need to have a whole bunch of different devices to just try to make that process as easy as possible for teachers, because it's hard. Um, and there's a, I mean, as you all know, there's a big process that goes into 3D printing. So the more that we can get focused on the awesome designs and making really cool projects and less about the troubleshooting aspects of it. Um, to me, that's a win for classrooms. So that's a yeah, win. That, that, that's the that's the thing across the board with this hobby is that all of a sudden, you know, you go from being you can't even see what I'm doing. Hang on a second, let me just move that around. You go from being, um, you know, I want to print this thing, and then the printer works for ages, and then when it doesn't work, you're then like, damn, how do I fix this? So then you start going around on YouTube, you start going around communities, you start going around, you know. And sometimes you don't get always get the best advice, um, you know. So to have that that thing, you know, that uh, connection with Maker Maid is is absolutely brilliant. You know, it really is. And uh, you know, like I say, I've been on a couple of your calls now. And there was a couple of weeks ago. There's a lady on there, and you'd sent her a new part, and she just was like, "Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I'll swap it out." And you talked to her all through it, and we did a couple of minutes. It was done, and she was back printing again, which you know was amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. It's hard to find. Um, it's it's different than you would have, you know, like a regular, like a 2D printer where you can just be like, press a button and it prints. And it's, you know, that we're trying to get to that part where it walks you through the step by step of how to get everything printing like those, you know, like a paper printer would um, to just to try to make it more accessible. So that that's our main goal, because um, not everybody, especially in a classroom environment, time is your biggest resource. So if you're spending tons of time trying to troubleshoot and trying to get something to work, um, then that's detracting time that your students could be spending on creating the projects then and actually use, utilizing the miniature factory that you have in your classroom. So Sure. So so is that, um, so going back to the fundamentals of this particular printer, the 300X, yeah. are, are, there, are there certain things on this that you thought, you know what, we could do that? You could have gone direct drive, you could have gone this, or you could have gone that, but you chose to keep it simple for those for those of, of us that need need a little bit of a G along, is that kind of fair to say? Or I mean, obviously this is upgradable as most printers are. 
Yeah, you could definitely upgrade it. And we when we wanted to, to use, you know, the common parts on it um, and, and common upgrade features. So you can upgrade it if you want to. But, yeah, it's a single extruder Bowden. But we wanted to have, like, the BL Touch, for instance, is something that we wanted to get um, that's name brand to make it easier for calibration because that is one of the toughest things for new 3D printer users to, to, to get through just to figure out exactly what that correct layer height is it's, it's tough to try to figure that out. Um, another thing is it has um, silent uh, trinamic drivers. So you mentioned that earlier, those 2208s. And that's because, you know, it could sound like an airplane in the in trying to take off in the back of your classroom, which makes it really difficult to teach or to work on other projects when you have like, rrr, 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 like going on in the background. So we wanted to have it as silent as possible too. Um, but we decided to not go with the silent fans because then you it's kind of hard to even tell if it's on. So yeah. um, I've experimented with some silent fans, which, I mean, they're rad. They're awesome. Don't get me wrong. But you want to also make sure that, you know, if you're listening to it from across the room, you know that it's actually on, that you didn't leave it on. And you can actually hear, like, the fan going. So that's why we didn't go with the silent fans, but we did go with the silent motors. Um, so as an example of some of the different features and stuff that we had, because we tried to look at, look at it through that lens of, like, well, how would a beginner maker – or, or educator or student or whomever get into it as quickly as possible. So that's the lens that we try to look through all the designs and features and stuff with this printer as we're getting it together. Sure. We've got, a quick, we've got a couple of comments on here. Yeah. Um, so and nice. uh, Renee was saying, uh, how hard would it be to extend the size of all three dimensions? Um, good question. So the Z dimension, that one is probably the easiest if you wanted to do that, but that's still like replacing the extrusions and the lead screws. Um, to be able to like change that height. But as far as the X and Y, you're gonna have to, you know, extend the same thing. You're gonna have to extend these out there. And this base is, it's a metal base. So it's made to be 300 by 300 by, um, by 400 millimeters. So it's made to be that about 12 by 12 by 16. Cause what we've also found is that's about the maximum size that you can get really reliable prints in over and over and over again. If you start getting extending over than that, it just, it's kind of compounding variables on more things that can go wrong on like the size. So we found that that was a good sweet spot for printing either a bunch of different smaller items or one like larger item. Cause I mean, 16 inches tall is still a pretty big model that you yeah. can create. So um, the time that it takes to, if you wanted to expend, you know, get something longer than that. I'm the longest print that I've done on this was 14 days, but uh, which is a, that's a long time, obviously <laughs> it's yeah. 30 printing straight. Um, but if you get bigger than that, then you're looking at like weeks and, and you know, of, of 3D printing time too. And you're having to switch out multiple rolls of filament and stuff too. So um, we found that that's just a really good size, um, a good mixture from um, for like a good large build area that's still going to be reliable. That's cool. That's cool. I'll tell you what then. Let me just see if I can. Uh, I've got a bit yeah. of flare on that, bit of lens. Picture? Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll just do this. Okay, so this is the this is the moment of truth. We uh, we here we go. We Fingers crossed. Drum roll. This, we, we do have some fun with this. You see. Um, but you know we've set it up. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We are going to now switch the printer on, and three, two, one. The fans are on. The Bo Touch is engaged. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Did I push it in all the way? You're oh, the good, screen's yeah. going. It's going. Look at that. It's look at going, that. Yeah. Booting up. It's loading. Hey, look at that. Booting, please wait. Now, I noticed as well, Drew, that you have recently updated your Maker Made logo. We have, yeah. And that one isn't updated yet, as I see that it's, uh, <laughs> that it's going through. Um, it's Yeah, it's trying to find all the stuff that we have updated. But, yeah, we just we just updated the logo and um, kind of refreshed it up a little bit. So, yeah, we're excited about that, too. So what films have you watched on your printer? So I've watched on the screen. Uh, I've played some YouTube videos on there, but I haven't. I haven't streamed it through the printer itself. But to test the screen, I did watch some YouTube. I've watched your your videos, man. Uh, totally. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. So let's try and get. Uh, what I'll try and do, guys, I'll just try and move this in a little bit so you can kind of uh, hopefully see. I'm just going to tread over like a million wires here. Let's see if we can get a slightly better angle. I won't show that printer in the background. That's one of the. <laughs> <laughs> one of Michael's favorites. Uh, there's a nice picture of Michael from Teaching Tech as well. He's, um, he's, uh, what's this then? Okay, so set user level. Where should I go for this? Get started. This is nice. Uh, would you like this to connect to the internet? Should I say no for now? That's totally up to you. So, 
Um, yeah, it's if you want if you want to connect it to your Wi-Fi, we can go through and look at that. But for now, for the test print, I mean, you can you can work with that later if you want. It's totally. We'll say no then. Uh, we'll say no for the wireless hotspot then. Yeah. Uh, so it has a hotspot. So if you don't want to connect it to the internet, you can boot up the hotspot because that's another thing too. A lot of classrooms you can't connect mysterious devices to the network. So by connecting those mysterious devices to the network, that can cause some uh, some some hiccups for classrooms. So we wanted to have that hotspot feature so you could just send directly to the printer itself without having to worry about that. This is really nice. I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. This is this is <laughs> that's really cool. Man, this is awesome. I'm dead. Would you rename it? I saw you renamed it. Would you name it? I, I called it 300 X. I, I didn't want to be, you know. I could have yeah. called it Michael from Teaching Tech, of course. <laughs> so we're now booting again. Um, so what? So in regards to, uh, I did have a few questions for you, as you know. Yeah. What, what what's unique about this? What what do you get in you know versus going to Ch getting one of these from China? Um, now this came. This actually came from the. This came from the U.S., didn't it? So the US, the U.S. and China. So we build it in both places. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's both. Yeah, full transparency. It's it's still both. Yeah, it's okay. it's both. We just we have a great relationship with an awesome factory um, in, in China too. That so we we duel it. We do it here and there. I'm still waiting for no. my screen to boot up. Yeah, it takes it a second when you when you rename it to to boot it because it's changing the name inside of the Raspberry Pi. So it's it just takes a second. That's right, guys. I'm just going to go back to a few guys from here. Yeah, I mean that display is awesome. Uh, thanks, Tripod. It is actually. So it's one of the things that really we, nice, really nice. One of the things that we wanted to do with the renaming too is if you have multiple printers. So if you have a print farm, you can still connect to those multiple printers with by adding in the different printer names. So you can connect with multiple printer names, and then it tells you the name across the top of the screen too. So then users can know which printer they're actually sending their prints to. Because I've talked to a lot of teachers that have print farms as well, and then trying to figure out which printer you're sending what item to can be. Um, can be something that uh, tricky sometimes to figure out where your print disappeared to. That is uh, that is that's really nice. I, I, I was, you know, it's funny because when you see it in the photos, and I'm sure even online, I think when you've got it in front of you here, you know, this is like a tinkerer's dream, really, isn't it? You know, I can see, I can, I can see the appeal here. People going up to this and going, "What does this do?" And then people going, "No." I'm middle of this middle of the print. Don't touch it. Can you lock this screen? Um, so we did think about that and about having like a password like lock protection, but we don't have that set up yet. No, not yet. Million dollar idea right there, matey. Yeah. There you go. I'll um, let you have that one. So I'll let you have that one. That I'll take it. I'm gonna take it. So that's one of the that's one of the awesome things about it too, is because of the way that we do our updates, both through USB or our updating um, stream on, on GitHub is uh, we can we can actually integrate uh, our users input and ideas for the updates to where it has all the hardware that it needs and software fixes incremental software fixes like having a screen lock and things like that we are features that we can add um, as it keep it continues to keep going going back round it's asking me to do something else unfortunately oh, yeah it's up in such a way that I can't do this so select user le level let's get started uh, do you want to get to the internet? uh we're gonna go no should i just skip the whole thing on this uh you can you can say no on that yeah you can so, you can say skip if you want and it'll just take you to the next menu okay so what should i go for then that's all hey, it's up to you uh, that's all what do you want to do should i go to beginner advanced or expert first one in i i mean yeah comment section go for it go for it the main, so the main the main thing is the the changes in the slicer capabilities um uh that's that's the change between the different user modes is the just to try the slicing as easy as possible well, so yeah you know what? one you want to go for no one i'll do expert all right then go on then. here we go expert right level the printing bed corners place a sheet of printer paper um on the center of the print bed to ensure that the bed is clear of anything else then hit start okay so I've got to find some paper. You said you give me some paper already. There's some in there. Paper. That's true. <laughs> come with paper. Here it is. Free paper, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. This is where it goes. There we go. Right. So next, we're going to hit start. Here we go. 
So this goes back now to, um, I'm going to level, so I'm going to be leveling this. Okay, here we go. Then. Well, Renee's still going to know what you're doing. <laughs> you can see, right? Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Yeah. So, I've got to come up a bit now. So, should I just level this bed, or has it got Z stop on it? So, the, this is the making sure that the bed is completely flat and calibrated. So, this is a first time user setup to make sure that the bed the bed is pretty much flat, so it doesn't have any giant discrepancies in the BL touch. So, um, if you want to skip this this process right now, you you can because it's just making sure that it that BL touch since your experience with the BL touch sensor. Um, you've kind of seen that before. So um, you can see that, that that's just kind of going around and making sure that the bed calibration is all set itself. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, no, I, so this is what happened. I select expert and it really should have been beginner. So it, it, it's, it walks you through that no matter which one you do at the very beginning. Yeah, right, fair I'm enough. I'm going to tell you what to do. Yeah, so it flattens the bed and then it does the BL touch calibration. So if you want to set the BL touch calibration, because um, I saw that you skipped that um, yeah. too, if you want to calibrate the BL touch to make sure that's yeah. calibrated for your Let's specific game, you can do that. that one, and then that'll calibrate your Z offset, and then you can run um, a test brand. So, so calibrate BL touch. Do I have to yeah. have the paper yeah. on the picture, though? Um, you can just hit calibrate BL touch, and you don't you you can use the paper. Yeah, it'll kind of walk you through it. It'll tell you what to do. So you want me to put the paper on there as well? Yeah, it'll walk you right through it. Yeah. Um, and if you're experienced with calibrating the BL touch, you'll kind of see the, uh, the the features to kind of move the Z up and down and what correct height you want it yeah. to move around and stuff like that, too. There's a bug. There's a little spider that's just fallen on it. Can you see this? That's free. That's a free, that's a free bonus from you. <laughs> from America to you. Oh, my God. Did you see that fall out of the hot end? Did you see that little, like, little spider thing? Here it is. Oh, this is the Come on. It didn't fall out of the hot end. This is an American spider that's come and invaded in the UK. I don't know what to do with it. Um, hang on a minute. I can't have – there's a quarantine situation here. We've got COVID and everything here now, guys. Okay, we're going to that's, – let's get rid of the spider. Right, there we go. Right, we, we've rid ourselves of the spider. <laughs> Stop skipping steps. Yeah, I know. Here we go. Here we go. Calibrate the BO touch. Okay, so here we go. So let's hit the button then. So we're going to be um, – how how close to the bed do you like this to be, Drew? Uh, I usually like it to be – I mean, it kind of depends on what material that you're printing, but mo usually about like two-tenths of a millimeter, which is about a, a folded piece of paper. But then, you know, a non-folded piece of paper is about a tenth of a millimeter. So around there, you know, you it's – and that's one of the cool things about calibration is what – what works for you and how far away you want it to be. Cause I know some people that like to just really squish that first layer on and get a good smash layer to help it. And then other people that want to, that don't mind that it curls up on the edges if it's a little bit farther away. So it doesn't kind of, you know, like elephant foot the bottom out or anything like that. So sure, sure. it's perfect personal preference. And, and it's, that's one of the things about 3d printing that you just, uh, you know, it takes practice. <laughs> what do I do now? What's it doing now? What do you think? What's it say? It says, uh, Exit to finish. Yeah, it's it's just finishing. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Okay. Right. So we we spied it up. So, so you you skip the load filament steps. Uh it's true. Jason was talking about you skip it steps, but it's totally fine. Uh you skip the load filament steps and then the test print steps. So if you want to find the test print, if you go to the print menu, then it's on the onboard already. And then you can say test print. It will be a little test square. So uh, yeah, if you go to print and then um yeah, right there, printer storage. Then you can print the test print. There you go. That's a little square. And there we go. Wow, I love this. Well, thank Good. you as well for the spider. I really appreciate it. You're this. welcome. Hey, free of charge. Free of charge, just to you. <laughs> My heart to yours. What type of spider is that, Drew? What do you have, like, crazy spiders out in the US, don't you? Uh, I mean, we do have black widows. Y'all probably don't have black widows in the UK, do you? No, we, have, uh, we have false widows. Um, okay. And Brown recluses. So I'm in the South, uh, in Arkansas. So we have Brown recluses too. Um, they got to keep an eye out for, but I'm sure that's a friendly spider. It's just going to help kill bugs in your workshop. Right. That's, I got spiders in here that help me do the same thing. <laughs> I really hope so. I hope, you know, cause I don't know if you've seen that documentary about that, like young lads that got bitten by a spider 
and uh, he had all sorts of trauma, you know. Um, no. And he had to, you know, it's yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He got superpowers, that kind of thing. It was. Uh, you get superpowers from spiders? Is that true? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So William Johnson is also. <laughs> There you go. Look, William's in your town. Maybe you could be oh, friends. That's awesome. Sweet, William. I hope you killed it. Wow. <laughs> you guys are so, so narcissistic. Arachnophobia. Yeah. yeah. I've seen – that is a crazy movie. I've seen Arachnophobia. That's a wild movie with spiders running around from like the 90s. <laughs> that movie terrified me when I was <laughs> growing up. So um, we're heating up right now. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of the some of the questions. So yeah, we've kind of talked good. about the price point and stuff already. We've we've covered that, and I think we're uh, we're all good with that. So who are your competitors in this three D printing marketplace, um, <laughs> and what makes make it make different? So I mean that's that's the tough thing about. Um, competitors and where you're going to go. Cause there's hundreds of 3d printers out there. I mean, y'all know that there's so many 3d printers that are out there. Um, and there's tons of cheap 3d printers that are out there too. And this one's not that as, as we talked about the, the price and the, and our focus of what we're trying to do is different than those like beginner um, starter printers, because there is some tech that you're going to have to do. They're going to have to go through and troubleshoot a lot more to get started and, and get going with those, um, those cheaper printers. So our main competitors are the ones that, um, that are, are in like an educational space. So I would say something like a MakerBot or a Dremel that are, are working on trying to make it easier for people to 3D print. But a lot of those have proprietary things too. So they have proprietary filament and proprietary slicers and stuff like that to, to try to get you into their whole locked-in ecosystem. And our community is not like that. We have um, our guidelines and the things that, that we suggest that you do, but we can can help you print on whatever slicer or whatever system that you want to print on. Um, if you want to use whatever slicer or whatever filament, um, all the 3D printing parts, that's why we didn't want to make them all proprietary, like some of those companies where you have to get you know a specific smart extruder uh, that, that you can only purchase from them and it's only this price and it's only available here and, and stuff like that. So we wanted to make sure that that's not it either. And everything on this printer is easily upgradable and easily repairable too. So uh, some, I mean, everybody knows that parts break down on the 3D printer. So like even in this hot end part here, yeah, I can kind of move this over. So like on the mesh part right here, it has all the plugs and everything for all the fans and connectors and hot ends and everything else for you. So if anything ever goes, breaks down or you want to upgrade anything, you can. You don't have to redo the entire wiring of the whole printer to go to do maintenance or upgrading and things like that. So um, that's something that we wanted to keep in mind as well is like make it to where it's as open as possible and still keeping it as easy as possible to get um, users, especially uh, kids and students, um, 3D printing. So there's a question here. Will it ship from the USA because it's really pricey uh, for here in the Netherlands? So it's 95 bucks to ship internationally. So if you're in education, we do have an educational discount. You can use Sam's discount too. Um, uh, and, and that's 95 bucks over our international shipping. Um, and we just have to do that with the way that, uh, that the cost of shipping is, is um, that's, that's our fees. It's free in North America, but for overseas shipping, we, due to all the other restrictions and things like that, it's, it's 95. Cool. But you just, you can contact us though. I mean, if, and if that's going to be a deal breaker or something like that, we're, we're here to work with you. So if, if you're in a school and you want to get going, we want to help you get going. That's awesome. That's awesome. So my next question then is, uh, is actually about STEM. Yeah. Uh, and obviously it's big in the US at the moment. Uh, it has been for some time. It's not as big in the UK, um, but I am. It's funny because I actually signed up to be an ambassador for the STEM program in the UK. They've come back. They've asked me a bunch of different questions as well. So I'm, you know, I'm invested in that. I do like educating. I do like teaching. And part of the YouTube stuff, I know we have the hijinks. I know I mess about and, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. But, you know, uh, I, I believe that part of your education needs to be funny and humorous. And I think you enjoy it more, certainly, when, you, uh, when you're enjoying what's being said to you. And people have buy-in from that as well. So, you know, there, there is a serious side to this, of course. And, uh, you know, it's, it, for me, certainly, it's about putting technology in people's hands, uh, especially young people. Uh, where it's really going to make a difference. And uh, yep. it's funny yep. because uh, looking back onto my Facebook memories today, when I started making content for YouTube, uh, somebody reached out to me and said, my son is fascinated with your channel. He loves all the stuff that you're making. This is referring to robots and things like that. Um, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, you know, you're inspiring us. And I really like the fact that even if it just helps one person, for me, it's enormously important. 
So, you know, in STEM, education, 3D printing, you know, this is, for me, certainly looking in on this, this is definitely going to be the future. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, I think we're, we'll be catching up to this. Do I've got to say, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're I'm close. Just we're oh, close. We we're just, let's see if it works. We're moving. We're moving. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> So I've got a bit of film, yeah, so, a bit of film I, for my rocket. I 100% agree with you about um, STEM and education. And for me, it's all about empowerment and getting getting the tools into kids' hands and marginalized communities' hands. And anyone who might not be able to be exposed to that kind of stuff is just getting the tools in, in front of someone to be able to say that you can do this and this is a machine that you can use, that that to me is the most important thing. It's just a different way of looking at a solution. It's like you you can make something instead of going and getting something, you can make something, you can make your own solution. If there's something that you wanna fix that improves your community, you can actually design it and create it with this miniature factory. And, and that to me is the most incredible th way that I've seen students use 3D printers or when they make stuff that improves their communities. Um, everything from um, prosthetics to PE to working on um, different designs for their for their school, like little you know life hacks and stuff that they that you can come up with are just little like um, improvement of life things that are amazing that a 3D printer can do to just get your your creative mind um, going. That to me is incredible with education. Yes, yeah, so we got Tripod who uh, he he, uh, he he lost his leg unfortunately to uh, to cancer, and he was asking if um, if it's compatible with person with one leg. Um, whatever you do, do not send him a printer because he likes to mess them up, and he uh, he's a disaster area. Don't don't look at don't watch his video on the CR6 SE. It's an abomination. It's uh, it's it's bad news. Right, we are printing, but we are printing a little bit too close to the bed right now. So I'm going to go into. What am I doing? What's that? Okay, so at the moment it's drawing a line. Is that right? Yep. Okay, so at this point, can I um, can I modify the uh, code? Can I Z hop this, or can I not use this? So no. So with the with with the first print, it's just going to print it, and then it's going to print, and you'll kind of see where it is, and see if it's too low or too high, and kind of see where it is right now. So is it is it too low, too high, or what's it look like right now? Do you see some filament coming out? Let me uh, let me take a zoom. Actually, I think it might be all right actually. I think it might have been the old filament that was so in there. It does those lines on the end to prime the nozzle. So it does it it create it does those two like one fifty lines to prime it. Um, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are printing we're printing very nicely actually. Hey send me a message. Or send me a message to you, Sam. We'll talk about it. That sounds great. What's this? What's this? What's this? Oh yeah, okay. Green printing and painting. Jerry's sniffing around. Jerry's sniffing around. He's in uh, he's in Las Vegas. He's just hit yeah. uh, he's just hit a milestone on his YouTube channel. Uh, in That's fact, awesome. you know, Jerry is one of the people that got me involved with, uh, you know, talking about um, robots and 3D printing. And, you know, he's one of these people that's out, out in the uh, YouTube world um, that has, you know, he, he's doing he's doing some really good work out there. And, awesome. uh, you know, in fact, a lot of these guys are doing some really good work out there. Carl as yeah, well, yeah. Um, you know, Tripod's Garage, uh, all jokes aside, um, you know, they are, they're, they're very good people. Very, very good people. Awesome. But again, you know, um, Let's go back to my next question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you can send me a message at drew at makermade.com if you want, or any of our social media, if you say that you want to get yeah. in touch with me, um, they'll they'll put you in touch with me for sure. Um, and yeah, about the prosthetics, I know someone who, um, they were a middle schooler and they actually made their own prosthetic leg on a 3D printer. So you can do that. That's absolutely a thing you can do. So um, yeah, they were they were 13 uh, when, he, when he did that. So yeah, you can absolutely do that. It's super rad. Fair enough, fair enough. And I will say, people that think we get printers for free, we do. <laughs> man, I wish, man, I wish everybody could get printers for free. I wish that that was a thing that we could do. Man, yeah, that would be a cool world. We do, but at the same time, you've got to realize that there's a lot of work that's got to go into this. So now I've got to create content to use this. I think I'll put that out into my Facebook group. And of course, it, you know, one hand washes the other hand, unless you've only got one hand, of course. But um, one hand does usually wash the other hand. So you know when these people when, when companies send me stuff i've then got to spend a great deal of time and especially if they're not as good as this and james rook would tell you from uh uh 3d 3 honey badger um you know if it doesn't work you're kind of done you're kind of done is that is that all it's printing a square yeah it prints a little square to test your bl touch calibration so you can see how oh, that's it, it. Yeah. so don't, we, don't, we don't get a little cat we don't get 
you can get well, that's the thing. you can print all kinds of other stuff. I mean, it's got a rocket on there. It has a flexible dragon. If you want to do a flexible dragon, that's a really awesome print um, that's on there. There's a, there's a bunch of different ones that you can find um, that it comes with that you can that you can 3D print. But um, yeah, the sky's a limit on what you want to test print. Well, I'll tell you what. While we've been talking about some of the other stuff that, because obviously I got involved with this with the with the M2, and I reached out to you guys, and we got talking, and one thing led to another, and then all of a sudden I had one. Which is in uh, which is in my garage at the moment, awesome, and of course I am about to put out some stuff, um, some more stuff with that. So very quickly, I'd like to thank a couple of people, Polymaker for obviously sponsoring this today, 3D Filler Print, and of course Maker Made. And I just want to play this very short video, and then I'll be back when we do the draw. So just watch this space. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a square. Here it is. A square! Look at my square. How's it look? Is it nice and flat? Good it is really nice, actually. It is really nice. Heck yeah. It's, it's, so let's very quickly talk about the M2. So this is the 8 by 4 foot CNC machine, uh, which was uh, derivative of uh, the original Maslow that you guys have now taken and kind of taken it that step further. I think it needed to be taken that step further yep. as well. I think it was a good CNC machine, but you guys have kind of, tweaked it, modified it, played with it. And now you're talking about lasers and, you know, some other crazy stuff that, um, you know, we've had conversations about. Um, Absolutely. How, you know, how does the, how do these two products in your eyes and Maker Maze eye tie into STEM and education? So we, we see it as like a tool, an empowerment tool. So in the same way that the 3D printer is a miniature factory that built something, well, CNC machine, that's a factory that can, is actually a large format factory that can cut something. So the, the abilities and the ways that you can kind of mix and match those different like digital creation robots, it's the, the sky's the limit. I mean, you can, you can create different types of furniture that have, you know, 3D printed um, parts inside of it, or or maybe like part of a bracket or something along those lines. Or you can create different tools for your workshop that are going to work in there, like different 3D printed jigs or tool holders or things like that to be able to integrate both those technologies together. So um, that's something that we're really excited about to be working on this next school year too, to be able to work with more STEM programs and maker spaces and things like that about how you can make like large format uh, things, then then you can create kind of the, the small detailed parts of it with the 3D printer. Um, so that's some, some stuff that we're really excited about. Just different ways that you can bring uh, ideas to reality, uh, particularly in an educational environment, you're learning through that entire technical and creative process, um, as well as, you know, giving back to your community or building a small business at your school or, or however you're integrating it into your classroom. Yeah, the really cool thing is for me, you know, certainly looking at the stuff on Instagram, a lot of my buddies that are in the US that run businesses, you know, small businesses, sign makers and things like that, they're now using the M2 in their businesses. And it's really quite refreshing to see that uh, yeah. some of the people that I know, you know, have sort of seen the videos and gone, yeah, I want some of that. And, uh, you know, I love the fact that they do that. But certainly from a, from a package deal, the 3D printer and the CNC machine going into a school, you know, I never had anything like that when I was at school. You know, there was nothing <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, I didn't even have like a computer really. And it was like these uh, these great big floppy disk things. And, you know, there was very little you could do with them. So, you know, education, STEM, the whole kind of nine yards with this whole thing is uh, is in incredibly empowering. And, uh, you know, I certainly get a lot out of it. And I'm sure you do as well. 
Um, so let's do the wheel of names, shall we? Are you ready for this, Drew? This is I'm ready this, for it. Wheel it up. I'm, I'm not is, sure what wheel of names we're doing, this, but this is something else right now. So what we're gonna be doing, um, we are going to be giving away. Uh, I'm going to grab this. We're going to be giving away two kilos of filament, and I'm hoping. Yeah, this there we work. go. So this is a problem because That's I've real. got a 50-inch widescreen screen. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like, yeah. What's happening here <laughs> is, uh, yeah, obviously it's, uh, it's, yeah, it, it is what it is. So um, what we do? So hang on a minute. What's this? Let's get rid of this. So we've had 21 names put in there. And I'm going to be giving away a couple of them. So here we go. Let's hit the button. And our first winner is William hey! John. Look at that. Fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, William, if you can get in touch with me, uh, the real Sam Prentice at gmail.com. Uh, I'll make sure if you give me your address and everything. I've also got your email address here as well. So I'll. Uh, I'll be sure to uh, ping you an email if you don't get in touch with me or if you've um, quit the stream because you're bored. Uh, but let's move on swiftly to the next one. Congrats, Will. Here we go. Oh, look Carl. At Carl, well done, mate. Well done. Woo. Awesome. Awesome. That's incredible. That's incredible. All right, guys, you know what to do. Please get in touch with me and we will sort you out those uh, two kilos of filament. And I don't know if you know, but uh, the poly uh, the poly maker filament is uh, one of the most expensive 3D printing materials on the market, I think, at the moment. Uh, but it is also very, very good. I'm making a droid with it at the moment. Uh, it's kind of like a secret project that I'm got, I've got going on with um, Michael Badley. I will be using this on it as well. So, uh, uh, you know, watch this space. And obviously, I will be back reviewing this as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, I'm hoping that in the next next week or so, I should be looking at giving away another 3D printer. So uh, that's what we do on this channel. This is what it's all about. It's all about education and giving stuff away. Congratulations to the winners. Uh, any questions for Drew before uh, we end this fabulous uh, stream tonight? And uh, like I say, I'm going to be I'm going to get straight on into this. Uh, I'm going to start printing straight away. I'm going to ask you a few questions off air as well, Drew, because um, yeah. I, prob I probably shouldn't have hit expert mode. Uh, straight away and uh, maybe I need to tone it down a little bit I want to put the camera on there I want to do a bunch of stuff and of course it is it is proprietary uh, and I was just I was just going through some of the uh, the little menu buttons on here as well mm -hmm. and uh, see if we can go back where do we go back um, hang on I can't see the screen bear with me upside down yeah <laughs> it's like looking at it from different angles yeah <laughs> here we go yeah so I mean it is to be fair it is quite comprehensive isn't it you know there is quite a lot of information on nothing on storage at the moment of course uh you can up so you can update this live or yeah. Is it yeah 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 so you can okay. you can do either so you can either do usb if you've lost your connection or you can update and it'll update straight from uh from our wireless hub so That's yeah if you connect it to either ethernet or wi-fi then yeah you can update from online yeah that is i'll probably change the user level i don't know and what's classroom mode so that's for specifically for education. So it's new features and stuff that are um, involved for, for teachers. That's awesome. Okay, so the host name is HTTP 300x.local. Okay, that's awesome. And you can can you change you can change that from this UI as well? Can you? You can. Yeah. So you can change when you change the name of your printer, then that will change the host name. So then when you go and log into either the hotspot or on Wi-Fi, that's how you'll it'll that's the address that you'll type into your browser, whatever browser you're using. That's really cool. And of course, on top of this, you've then got, um, you know, access from your browser, as you just said, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all those crazy stuff that uh, maybe some of us are already used to when you're using things like ultra print and stuff. Uh, you know, my thing is time lapses at the moment. I'm doing a lot of um, a hell of a lot of time lapses, and I certainly wanted to use that on this. Um, so that was going to be one of my main questions for that. Uh, what age group is this aimed at for education? That's a good question, actually, Drew. Really good question. So uh I'm I'm kind of partial. Like uh, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, middle school and junior high for the uh, just the amount of really awesome creativity and stuff that that you can create with it. But I know that um, that three D printers like this particular printer is in elementary school all the way down to second grade, um, and that's just for this particular printer. But I know preschools that um, as well. So all the way up to high school, it's it's kind of how much you. 
are, are going to involve it in your curriculum. So are you going to have your students design everything from scratch or are they going to work in some sort of sandbox where maybe they have some designs that they can start with to maybe make um, something like um, ornaments or something like that or, or different signs or nameplates where they kind of start with some base models? Or are they going to go into like an advanced um, program, you know, like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or something along those lines to design something completely engineering from scratch? So that's the cool thing about 3D printing is you can kind of scale it to where um, you want it to be. But I would say that that this target is probably middle school to to, to junior high. That's cool. Uh, Christian, for me, can I drag you into one of my live streams uh, for my live shows? It'd be my first. No. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Of course, of course I will. Of course I will. Um, it's funny actually because I, I was on a, I was doing a live. Uh, no, I was doing a, a meeting, a Zoom meeting the other day, oh. and uh, there's this guy on there, and he goes, "I recognise you. I recognise you." And we were talking about printing, and we were talking about other things as well, in a completely different group. And he went, "You're that guy from Maker Mage. You did a video in, in in the UK, and he's got a they've got a maker space in the UK, and he knew me from that apparently. So he saw the video, and they got the Maslow, and you know uh, all that kind of crazy stuff. So." Uh, I told him to get in touch with you regarding upgrades and stuff. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Um, we will, uh, yeah. you'll hopefully hear from those guys. Uh, what's so, this? The Hang age, on. the age there, Renee, and thanks for your input too. I saw yeah. that a little bit earlier. Yeah. So the age is uh, uh, for middle school, most, most middle schools, I would say probably around like nine to 10 to like maybe 15, 16, like that age range right there. So um i'm not sure how that how that translates in different um countries because i know everybody's got different school systems and different levels i think it's like levels in the uk right i think it is yeah but yeah. i think the th i think the main thing is is if you know i'm 40 this year and this printer is going to be awesome for the stuff that i do so to be honest regarding regarding age groups you know is there really an age group i mean I, from certainly from an educational point of view definitely uh, but I think when you start learning CAD and you're, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of education, I don't really think that the UK has kind of got on to Fusion 360. I think it is going to be people that are um, certainly kids that are going to be learning that on their own. Uh, but it wouldn't be great if they had a 3D printer at their school, but they could actually make stuff, um, mm -hmm. you know, if their parents Absolutely. couldn't afford it or whatever. So, you know, that that's my um, that, that's my sort of input for this, really, I'd say. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, age is no brainer. Uh, age is no barrier. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, dude. it's it's. I know. I know young kids that like. I've done three D printing events and things like that. And any, if you can move around in and like Google something that you can 3D print something. You can go on, there's, there's, you know, every, like Tinkercad is a great place to get started with making stuff. And if you can click and, and move like a mouse or a trackpad, then you can design some stuff. So um, that's the cool thing. It's not, it's not age um, really. It's, it's, it's just like wherever you want to start, you can, you can jump in no matter how old you are. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, Drew, have you got any, uh, any parting comments? Hey Matt, hope you're well. I just want to say thanks a lot uh, for having me on here today. I uh, hope everybody had a, a good time watching it. And thanks for all the great questions. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing some some awesome stuff that I know you're going to be making on that thing. So I'll well, tell you um, what, I will, yeah. while you're there, I'll show you something that I'm working on at the moment. Um, and I won't say too much about it, but it's big. It's it's uh, about, big five, it's about <laughs> five foot. So I'll show you what I've started. This is probably, this is a 1600 hour print. Okay. So, and I've only got part of it done so far. So, 1,600 hours? Correct, yeah. So this... How many days is that? This is... That's 40 days. So this is um, something that I'm working on at the moment. It is in parts oh. right now. Um, but um, needless to say, no, it's, 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 it's going to be it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be featured in um, in a show that I've got coming up with, um, with another very famous YouTuber. Yeah. And, uh, you know, where we're going to be setting ourselves some challenges and stuff. So uh, I'm I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting involved with that. Uh, and that is being printed across eight printers at the moment. And this will, will hopefully tonight be uh, uh, exactly go big or go home. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, and Basically, this is going to be part, going this is going to be part of like an art project that I'm uh, I'm working on at work. We kind of figured that we'd try and use some sort of. Uh, uh, recycled filament and uh, try and make something really big for for the art artwork on the uh, on the wall. So uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's all good. It's all good stuff. But um, thank you, Drew. Um, so my review video will be up in hopefully in the next sort of week or so. Uh, I'm dead chuffed with this. Um, thank you very much to Maker Mage for sending this over to me. I uh, hope you guys have had a great time. Uh, please, the winners of the uh, competition, if you want to just get in touch with me, please do. 
and uh, we get that shipped out to you. The good news is, obviously, with the filament that um, I'm sponsored with, with Polymaker, we can ship worldwide. So it doesn't matter where you are, we'll find you. We'll send you some filament on the wheel of shame. That's all I'm saying. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to Drew. Thank you to Make and Made. And we will see you next time. Happy printing. Bye for now. Take care.